just yesterday during QuakeCon 2019, Bethesda held their Fallout 76 panel. During this, we heard from four of the top developers on the game about future details and mostly about future DLC and what some of those up and coming updates are actually going to bring. From this, we actually got a ton of news. I broke it down into two videos, one of them looking at everything non-Wastelanders related, so all the stuff coming in the next two to three months, but then the video you're watching right now, everything we learned about Wastelanders. This is the big new update that's pretty much going to almost be like a relaunching or a total overhaul of the existing game, bringing in human NPCs, dialogue choices, companions, romancing those companions, a lot of stuff is coming with this. And Bethesda actually had a lot to say and show around Wastelanders. Also, Though, if you are thinking about getting Fallout 76 or really any of the recent Bethesda games, there's a big sale going on right now on Green Man Gaming. They provided me with a free copy of Wolfenstein, but in the description is my affiliate link. If you want to buy one of these games, I do get a little kickback. But even further, if you actually use this coupon code, you get a further discount if it's your first time shopping at Green Man Gaming. But as far as Wastelanders go, one of the big things they did announce during this was actually a release date. We knew it was going to be fall, but obviously that's a fairly vague time frame. But as many probably expected, it's actually going to be towards the end of fall in November of 2019. One thing we actually still don't know about Wastelanders is if it's going to be a segmented release, like some of the previous previous DLC and even the current one, where one week we'll get one part of it, then the next week we get another part of it, or if it'll just be one big DLC drop. You have to assume they'll go again with that segmented approach, but I could see it being a bit more frustrating with Wastelanders if all these quests are as interconnected as they are described to be. But anyway, right at the start, they really describe how this is going to be a DLC and update that actually really overhauls Fault 76's map. We know that the Settler and Raider factions are coming to Appalachia, and it's going to bring a lot of different things. New settlements, some of which we've seen in the trailer, but even other things like random encounters, different points of interest. They described how this update will infest the map. It's not like you'll find these new human NPCs isolated to a couple of places, but seemingly just about everywhere. In one instance, a developer actually talked about going to a tavern and having a human NPC serve you. Dramatically changes the feel of the game. Oh, yeah. um, from the moment you walk out of the vault and you're interacting with NPCs to going to a tavern where there's an NPC bartender, I think uh, um, it, it changes it a lot for me. And to describe how with these changes, it really brings a dramatic change to the game overall. And also having the ability to talk to all of these NPCs with dialogue choices and actual consequences. One thing they mentioned a couple times is it actually seems like there's also going to be hostile raiders independent of the actual raider faction. So if you're not familiar or don't remember the Wastelanders trailer, as I kind of mentioned, the big theme of this will be the two opposing parties, the settlers on one side and then the raiders on the other side. Even though you probably think of the raiders as the bad guys, here they're not really. This group of raiders, although probably darker than the settlers, is more doing so in how they defend themselves. They're not overtly horrible people. Alternatively though, it seems like with this update, we also are getting probably what we imagine is the more traditional raider. They describe hostile raiders and crazy cannibals that you'll actually find around the map and how these are actually separate from the main raider faction. While speaking about the settlers and the raiders along with their major quests, they really describe how they want different shades of gray with each of the two factions. Not like one's a clear cut right answer and one's a clear cut bad answer. But also you could choose to side with one or the other with dialogue choices, how you act around them, and it's not like this is just an artificial siding with. There's an actual in-game system being added that with a reputation system. You have to assume as you do more quests for one faction or the other, your reputation will increase. And then as a result of this, you'll actually unlock additional dialogue choices. They didn't expand on this too much, but I wouldn't be surprised if maybe even some quests or items are also locked behind having a certain reputation level. But they also describe even with this reputation system, they're not locking you into it. If you want to switch sides or double cross the same side, you can do all that. You can switch back and forth between the two as you feel needed. As far as the dialogue goes, they kind of reiterated what they said in the past, how this is going to be a dialogue very similar to Fallout 3 and not Fallout 4. They describe how in Fallout 4, having that four dialogue wheel sometimes made it just have some forced dialogue choices and just all around wasn't super optimal. So instead, we're seeing the Fallout 3 approach, which naturally a lot of people prefer. And from here, we hear all about those skill checks that you will have depending on your special stats, but also some of those reputation checks, however those are implemented. It seems like dialogue is going to be a pretty major part of this. And at one point, they actually describe how they want the game to have a more active role in the storytelling, not as passive as it is with the game currently, where you just kind of consume all the holotapes and terminal entries, but rather with this DLC, you're mostly talking to NPCs, and that's how the story is told. They also talk a bit about companions, which although in this are kind of not the traditional companion, 
There is going to be companions and people that you can kind of have as your allies, but they say they'll mainly stay at your camp and they'll accompany you only on select and special quests. So it's not going to be your traditional companion that's following you around everywhere and you're dumping your junk onto, which naturally isn't the most ideal. That's kind of one of the biggest benefits of having companions, but I wouldn't be surprised if they have some other bonuses in this. Speaking of, and one thing you can do is romance companions. They describe a similar reputation system that we've seen with companions from many of the previous Fallout will be making a return with this one, which honestly is pretty cool. But also, outside of just some of the main factions that you're going to be interacting with, and even just those random raiders that are apparently now going to be in the game, they also describe how there's going to be minor factions, also with human NPCs. Some of the, the, the minor factions that we're not going to talk about yet, um, I got the... No, no, I'll talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go on the line. Um, one of the minor factions is going to be Ravel, a cultist of the Mothman. If you guys recall back to the original Wastelanders trailer, and I actually pointed this out in my original trailer analysis, you could see the player fighting with an enemy wearing the cultist rags. And at the time, I was like, hey, maybe that's going to be a thing, but no, yeah, it is. We're getting official confirmation that one of the factions coming, even though it's just a minor one, will be focused around this cult, which hopefully means we get an expansion and additional details around the cult, the lore behind it, and potentially some quests to go along with it. And one of the things I really was hoping to hear, and that we do actually hear, is that Wastelanders and all these things I've been describing, dialogue choices, companions, human NPCs, it's not just a DLC for the game, I mean, it is a DLC for the game, but it's also going to be the way they handle future content. And they do explicitly say how what they're doing now is building tools for all of their future content to use. And again, this is just the beginning of that. We are These are the tools we're building to create all future content as well. So hopefully come 2020, we're going to see more DLCs with human NPCs, dialogue choices, and more in line with traditional fallouts, which I'm honestly really excited for. Fallout 76, although having many problems, had a lot of potential. And I think using this new system, having a way more hybrid approach of a lot of the good things from the single player ones, but also a multiplayer twist, is the ideal. I think it's what a lot of us hoped this game would be, and it looks like Bethesda is taking it in that direction. It only took a year. But that's talking pretty broadly about the mode overall, just some of the kind of various things or activities you could do, but looking at concrete things coming with this, we also got several details around that. They share a ton of concept art about some of the various outfits and armors that will be available from this. From the gameplay, we also saw a ton of stuff in this category, but the concept art looks pretty cool. And something that got me curious is a lot of these seem to be snow themed, and it made me wonder if potentially we'd see a season change with this DLC. We know there's going to be a time jump, and I think that'd be a really cool way to actually change up the map and give it a distinct different feel. When Wastelanders drops, it won't just switch from 2102 to 2109, but it'll also switch to December or January of 2109. That's all pure speculation on my part, just reading into this probably way too deeply, but I think it would be kind of cool. And I think if you actually take some of these armors that look very bundled up, they don't fit super well into the current climate of the game, which is honestly what made me think about this in general. There also are a ton of other outfits they show us that do fit pretty well into the climate of the game, so it might invalidate my theory. But either way, a lot of this does look pretty cool. With some of the past DLCs, we haven't been seeing a ton in the way of new armors or items to use, so I think a lot of this stuff is very welcome. But we also see some really awesome looking new weapons. They describe how they wanted to incorporate a new Goss weapon tree, and here we see two things. One was kind of explicitly confirmed as a Goss minigun, that being on the top, and the bottom weapon, I'm not too sure. To me, it kind of looks like a Goss shotgun. Obviously right now, we already have a Goss rifle, so a shotgun seems like it could fit in pretty well, or maybe it is just a different take on the Goss rifle. Either way, they look really, really cool. You have to imagine this Goss weapon tree will be extra high level, like laser, plasma, and then Goss as the highest tier. And yeah, definitely good work from Bethesda. I've been wanting new weapons in this game for a long time, and it looks like they're finally coming. But speaking of plasma, they also are adding in several additional plasma weapons with this DLC also. The plasma caster that we saw from one of the trailers, now we actually see in its whole 3D model glory. That's obviously really cool. It's from some of the previous games, so probably bring back nostalgia for some of you, but also this little plasma SMG that looks really cool and to me kind of feels a lot more like some of the art style they took with weapons from the older fallouts, which is interesting. In general with this game, I feel like they were really taking reference from a lot of the older fallouts and I personally like it. In the original Wastelanders trailer from E3, we saw a bow and arrow being held. They actually give us additional details around that. We're also putting, obviously you saw in the trailer, um, archery and bows 
And while that might seem a step back from submachine guns and nukes you can shoot, we're gonna put new perks behind that. And so you're gonna be able to use that if you're a more stealthy character or a hunter. And even further that they're playing around right now with the idea of attaching dynamite to some of the arrows, giving you explosive arrows, which would just be absolutely awesome. As many of you guys probably saw, I recently covered the first bow and arrow mod for Fallout 4, at least the first really well done one. And after using that for a while, I personally just wanna see it in all of the Fallout games. It is a lot of fun. But even outside of just weapons, Weapons, they actually show us several new creatures also. We get some concept art of this guy that we did see from the trailer. They describe how this is actually going to be a Wendigo Colossus. The Wendigos obviously already being in Fallout 76. It almost looks like three Wendigos merged together somehow. In the lore of Fallout 76, the Wendigo was actually just a mutated human that was cannibalistic or turned cannibalistic. I'd be curious to see if there's a deeper backstory for these Colossus Wendigos, but either way, again, it looks really awesome. And then they're also adding in floaters, which appeared in some of the original Fallout games. The original lore on these is they were actually FEV infected flatworms, so you might actually see these with some of the super mutants. In previous games, they were allied with super mutants. It's a fairly tough enemy. They do fly, obviously. They have some gas attacks and things along those lines. I'm pretty excited to see this in a 3D model. I think it could actually look pretty awesome. One thing that not too many people probably picked up on, but somebody actually mentioned it to me, they actually changed the roadmap for Fallout 76 now that we got the full reveal of Wastelanders. Comparing the original roadmap to the updated one, that new features at the end that almost looked like robot companions was removed and now we just have new weapons and gear. To me that almost feels like robot companions maybe were planned or some robot DLC was planned and it didn't end up panning out. But the new weapons and gear actually look custom. That gear on there doesn't really look super similar to anything we have in game right now, and I actually think it might be that new power armor we see from the trailer. So that's pretty much all the new information we got as far as Wastelanders explicitly, but actually in addition to this, right around the release of Wastelanders, there's two other major changes coming to the game that they talked about at this panel. First and foremost, renormalization. Basically all that means is they're doing a full-on balance pass for the game. To make it simple, really what they're doing is they're looking at high-level players, low level players and trying to normalize the curve between them. So people on the bottom end get picked up a little bit and they'll deal extra damage. People on the top end will be nerfed a little bit. The idea behind this is so you're still relevant against higher level players. They're probably anticipating a lot of new players when this DLC comes out so it makes sense and describe how they want to do this for the game overall, but especially for events. But also the legendary perk system that was seemingly getting added with Nuclear Winter in this DLC wave is actually now seemingly getting pushed to Wastelanders or that's when they expect for to actually come out. So the way this legendary perk system is going to work is after hitting level 50 and then every 50 levels after that, you'll be able to go to one of your special stats and make it a legendary. So let's say at level 50, you make your strength stat a legendary. This will give you access to new and additional perks that are supposed to be pretty powerful. These will give you additional in-game bonuses similar to all the other perks. They describe some new perks, but I wouldn't be surprised to see enhanced versions of existing perks also. And then naturally after 50 levels, you could do it again and then have two legendary special stats and then two legendary special perks to go along with it. They also describe though when creating a new character you're going to now have a new game plus option. So if on a separate character you actually did prestige some of those special stats, the new perks you took from that can actually be used on one of the new characters as you're creating it, giving veteran players who are just starting out on a new build actually quite a bit of a head start. But also actually one of the coolest parts about this, at least in my eyes, it's going to work with existing high level characters. So hypothetically if you're level 150 and this update goes live, you will have three special stats you can make legendary. And yeah, that was actually pretty much just about everything we heard about, saw, or learned from this panel. A lot of really great stuff. I think the Wastelanders part of this got me the most excited. This DLC in general, I'm very excited for. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully you found it informative. I will have links down below to everything and anything I talked about, as well as my affiliate link for Green Man Gaming. But with that, I thank you again for watching, and I hope to see you all next time. Later.